welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us, tuning in, listening or watching, doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. I feel like it's been a while since we said that. Yeah, I feel like it has too. It's like also been a long episode. time since we've done a good episode, but I have high hopes for this one. Um, <laughs> oh, just wait. I wrote it. <laughs> well, but it's a useful episode, hopefully, guys. <laughs> so, it, well, for yeah. the first time in a while. Definitely. Um, before we get into the schedule, I do want to very quickly <clears throat> mention, <clears throat> if you missed our announcement video that went up this past weekend, we are officially partnering with Tyler Lee from Burst of Knowledge. His link is down in the description. Highly recommend going and checking him out. He focuses a lot on financial sides mm -hmm. of magic, which we don't tend to cover. Right. Uh, so we think be, that culmination will hopefully be a really good partnership. Mm -hmm. Especially for you guys, if you're interested in uh, investing or selling off cards when the time is right, all that stuff that we don't know about. Yeah, we don't touch any of that. So he's the person to talk to. Um, Definitely. We've been working with him to get him all set up to make sure he has the equipment and the, the know-how to make sure he can release his videos all the time. Yeah. So hopefully he'll be bringing you guys a lot more content as well. So Awesome. With that, the schedule for today, of course, we are going to kick off with our random card of the day. Fun stuff. Our main topic today, it may not be a super long topic, but it's hopefully going to be really in-depth on the stack. Uh, we actually had this as a request from somebody on Facebook who said, hey, I really don't know enough about this. Let's do an episode on it. We'll we said, sure, and here we, we are. Put it off for two <laughs> weeks. <laughs> we did. <laughs> Um, <laughs> then, of course, we have our question of the week, and then we will go into our cracker packs, which very soon we'll switch over to Dominaria. Ooh, without either wait. of us hitting our goal cards, most likely. We have at this point. two packs to go? Ye two weeks? Yes, I think. Two weeks? I think so. I think so too. We really need to like find a new way to do goal cards, I feel like. <laughs> I mean, we'll I'll, talk about that. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> um, we'll fix it at post. That's not, that's not up to you guys. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> all right, so random card of the day in three, two, one. <laughs> all right. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. Go ahead. Sokenzen Bruiser. There we go. Sokenzen, whatever. Uh, and Amigawa, man. <laughs> uh, I don't know. A hey, uh, three, three for five, four colorless, one red with mountain walk. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Um, this is, like, not even good filler. <laughs> no. I say that because it's a, um, so you play this in limited, first off, let me say. There's me say, no hope for this in constructed. No, not, not a bit. Unless you're ogre tribal, and then you don't have any options. Ogre tri <laughs> ogre tribal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you play it in limited, but it costs five, and it's in red. So you yeah. you're realistically hoping to hit your bomb like five or six in red, and then everything else is just little. Yeah. And like damage to the face. So to have a three three come in on turn five isn't awesome. Mountain walk is cool. It just means it's unblockable if your opponent controls a mountain. That's sweet. Yeah, but like you as far as keywords go. That. If yeah. you're getting a 3-3 three, three for 5, you really want a better keyword than Mountain Walk. Because, you want a keyword or an ETB. Yeah, good, like right? Mountain Walk literally means nothing unless they're playing one of five different colors. So right. you have a 1 in 5 shot of making that even relevant right. at all. I think a, fl a <laughs> flying honestly would be okay. Like, I can see... The flying you... ogre. <laughs> I know, but like a 3-3 three, three for 5 with flying, I yeah, think, yeah. is the only justifiable filler. Yes, but even in me. that instance, it's filler. Yeah, it's not, you know what it's I mean? not great. Like, yeah, it's you don't, still not amazing. You take it because it's in your colors and nothing else in the pack is worth it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, not very good. Not showing the best of Kamigawa. Mm -hmm. Although, Kamigawa was a controversial oh, set anyway. Controversial? I think. How do you a mean? lot of people didn't like it. Really? Because of like just the weird stuff that went on in that There block. are a lot but... of funky <laughs> mechanics. But it was fun. It was super like, flavorful. It was really cool. Yeah, the flavor was on point. Loved it. Man. I loved it. I liked I liked it. Um I didn't know enough about I was really bad at like drafting. Oh yeah. Way yeah. back then. I didn't even I know was really what draft was at that point. I was a kid. So yeah. Um But it was still fun. It was cool. It's a cool set. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Moving on. By sucking Sockins and Bruiser. Oh, bruise. That thing. Bruise. Whatever. God, the names are tough. It's not a very good card, guys. <laughs> just don't take it. If you see it uh, in the little 25 cent box, 10 cent box, just be there. like, ah, oh, we found your home. I'm just going to leave you there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to relook. <laughs> You've done enough. Mm. Uh, all right. Will. Hey. Uh, mm. As we mentioned, Will has written this episode. So. Tell me about the stack, Will. I'm glad you asked, Kevin. 
what the stack was. What a good segue. <laughs> Segways are hard. So, there exists in magic kind of a behind the scenes happenings at all times. These are steps, checks, priority, things like this that happen that we don't talk about as much, like verbally mm -hmm. we just kind of as you as you play magic more and more you just kind of assume things happen um so the stack is kind of one of those things it's this imaginary place basically <laughs> where your spells go to wait before they resolve it's purgatory honestly for cards <laughs> so in thematically in the story yeah, yeah. it's like the in-between when you're pulling things from planes before you manifest them in front of you that's like that the, i didn't know that's, that's cool that's magic's like Fantasy the explanation. Just, of yeah, the justification. Stack. Yeah, yeah. Um, but essentially, <laughs> so the stack isn't a mechanic unique to magic. It exists in a few other places, two in particular. Uh, one is old programming, really old programming. Um, the second is just other games. So other turn based games use the stack in different ways than they did before magic. But magic is really nowadays the only place you'll see something like the stack yeah. exist. So what is the stack? I've been talking about it. So it's the queue where spells go to load before they're in there. That's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> how do you get spells in the stack? You play spells. Play them. Yes, you cast <laughs> it's them. It's a good way to get there. Um, works exactly like this. I have land. I'm tapping... Let's, let's use our ogre. I'm tapping my five lands. <laughs> my sookins and bruiser goes on the stack. And then priority is passed. We'll get to priority in a second. Yeah. But if nothing else happens... He resolves, it resolves. It resolves. <laughs> and now he's there, the stack is no more, and the game can continue. So. You know what's really interesting that I'm just now realizing? What's that? Tangent. Weird, we almost never do that. Um, almost never? We never do that. <laughs> so what's really funny is we've been at this podcast now for about a year. Yeah. And our name comes from the stack. If you, I mean, it resolves, mm -hmm. meaning it's coming off the stack and resolving. Right. We hadn't thought to talk about the stack in a year. <laughs> <laughs> it took us this long to get here. We're, we're slow learners. It's fine. Just keep going. Yeah, we're slow learners. Hopefully we're better teachers. I don't know. That's, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Um, yeah, so. Right. <laughs> after it resolves, <laughs> wink. Ching. Uh, after it resolves, it is in in play. The stack is no more for that phase, and, and, and you're good. Um, so, uh, the stack resolves in this order. And this is important. First in, last out. So that means the spells that were cast first will be the last to resolve. Essentially, the, the real-world example of this is if you're literally stacking pieces of paper. Uh, if I flip this first, and then here, I'm going to read this one first, and then this one, even though this was the first one I put in. Yeah. Uh, that's... Think of it like they play this, it goes on the stack, a responding spell goes on top of it. The responding spell will resolve first, the and then this one first. Uh, yeah. Second, excuse me. Yeah. Um, it's, I think it's, it's very simple in that respect. It is. But it's yeah, important yeah. to know how stuff works. So, um, different ways to use the stack. An example I thought of that I'd bring up is, um, or how you might want to use the stack. It's something like this. So your opponent has a Simic Biomancer in play. Little dude that says, uh, when other creatures enter the battlefield, they come in with 1-1 one -one counters based on my power. Okay. That's what he says. Um, your opponent is playing a locks on Smiter. Ooh. Can't be countered. Yeah. So it'd be it'd be nuts to let that hit the board, but I have murder. Yeah. So when I get past priority, I'm gonna murder his biomancer before Loxon comes in. Mm -hmm. Murder goes off the stack, biomancer is dead, locks on smiter comes in, just as a four four. Yeah. So that's how that would happen, essentially. Um, this is a good time to talk about priority because this is super important. Yeah. In the stack. I learned something when looking into this, by the way. What's that? Um, so with priority, mm -hmm. my thought was you play a spell, and then priority is immediately passed to the opponent. Mm -hmm. I found that's not actually the case. It just often doesn't come up. When you play a spell, you have a chance to respond to your own spell. You can maintain that priority, mm -hmm. and then it passes to the next person. Right. I didn't actually think about that because nine times out of ten that doesn't really come up as much. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because like you play a spell and then most times it's just like, okay, do you counter it or do you not counter it? Do you have a response to it? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I actually didn't know that you maintain that priority. It's interesting because yeah. there are plenty of scenarios where that does come up. It's just I have not actually had too many of them. So, so that's a good point to bring up. Priority <laughs> is something nine times out of ten you voluntarily give up to your opponent. 
um, to like maintain the course of the game. You give them priority. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, I'll, I'll put a pin in that because I, I want to go back to it. <laughs> um, but essentially, it works like that. I play a spell. Let's say it's, I don't know, um, Doom Traveler. Kevin yeah. hates Doom Traveler, so he's going to essence scatter Doom Traveler. So I play Doom Traveler. <laughs> priority passes to him. He gets a chance to respond. Count, counters it. Priority comes back to me. Yeah. If I have no other responses at that point, or I don't want to do anything else, the stack will then resolve. Yeah. Things happen like that. Um, so Kevin's example, why it's important to give your opponent priority is because, let's say I have Doom Traveler. Kevin hates Doom Traveler. He's going to counter it. <laughs> But I've also got some big scary thing that I'm gonna play. <laughs> if I give him priority, and he plays a counter, all right, priority's back to me. Yeah. I can play my instant or my flash, that the, whatever I wanted yeah, to yeah. play, and Kevin has encountered it. Yeah, <laughs> That's a fun thing to do with priority there. Definitely. Um, um, and there are situations too where like, um, and I actually looked this one up, there's something to do with imminent doom and two shock lands. Or not two shock lands, excuse me, two shocks, actual shocks. Okay. Um, and so the idea was you have imminent doom out, and you want to deal six damage to the opponent to kill them. Okay. But the way, in the intuitive way to think about it is I'll play a shock, it'll resolve the imminent doom trigger, all that stuff. I'll play the second shock, but because there's now already a counter on imminent doom, it won't actually deal the damage that I need it to. Right. What you can do is, as long as imminent doom is out, you can shock... And then in response to the first shock, you hold your priority and you play the second one. And they both, because of the imminent doom trigger countering off of the first shock and then also the second, they all mm -hmm. go on the stack at that same time. And so they always end up resolving. And so you're going to get a counter even though you played two spells of the same mana cost. It's kind of interesting. I found that one kind of fun. Neat. Deals that six damage, kill some people. Zap. Doo doo. Pew pew. <laughs> nice. Um, so yeah, priority essentially is just how we know who gets to play things when. Uh, and that's really why it's important to understand priority. Um, when you can, when you can't play spells. Um, a lot of times people don't talk about priority in magic, um, but it's it's always part of the game. So the biggest example of ignoring priority is control decks. I say that because they say land go like, yeah. all the time. Yeah. And all land go means is I've played a land... I'm giving you every piece of priority here unless you <laughs> want to do something. That's my turn, so it's your turn to do stuff. Yeah. Uh, and oftentimes people, you know, won't because yeah. they're not controlled that. But anyway, um, <laughs> is there anything else I want to say? Oh, yes. Um, there are certain times people don't get priority, and this is really important. So uh, untap, upkeep, draw. Uh, there are two times when people don't get priority in that sequence. Okay. So it's in steps when you usually don't get priority, not in phases. So, untap step, mm -hmm. whoosh, or, yeah, upkeep. <laughs> upkeep is a phase, so that's different. Yes. Your opponent is past priority during that phase. Yeah. But it's passed back, so they have a chance to, for instance, path something. Or Vendillion click, which happens a lot oh, yeah. on upkeep. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. And then draw step, Yeah. they don't get past priority. Um, clean up steps. Now, this is... This can change depending on what's on the field and what's mm -hmm. being played or whatever, but normally during cleanup steps, no one gets priority. All that means is damage is coming off of creatures, um, end of end of play abilities are are resolving, cleaning up, they're finishing, whatever. Discarding the hand size. Right, discarding the hand size, stuff like that. None of those um, go on the stack. They are game actions, so no one gets priority. Exceptions to this, if things are dying and then triggers go off, Triggers right. that would go on the stack, now priority is back <clears throat> right. in the game. Whoever is the non-active player gets priority after the active player triggers. Yeah. Makes uh, sense. Resolve. Yeah. Um, and then the active player will get a chance to respond again. Thus, there's a new stack, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. But that rarely happens. Well, not rarely, but it's it's not as common as, you know, intern stuff. Um, <laughs> okay. So, other things about the stack. Um what I found really cool and really good to know is you can target any spell that's on the stack, regardless of position with whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so the most common, or one at least very common instance of this is a counter war over a spell. Yep. So let's say I'm playing a scary, big scary monster creature thingy. Kevin hates it, so he's going to counter it. But I say, <laughs> ha ha, no, no, I'm going to counter your counter. Yeah. Now a newer player might think, well, 
I'm holding another counter, but he's but it's it's only for creatures or something, mm-hmm. or I can't I can't target his creature. He's countering my counter. No, no, you can still you can still target the creature spell on the stack. So what would happen then is the counter you just played to target the creature, the last one, would resolve. Creature's countered. It's gone. Kevin's trigger, his counter would go off. Mm-hmm. Not trigger counter, excuse me, to counter the spell. That's not there anymore. <laughs> it would fizzle. It basically fizzle that's that's too. the colloquial term. Yeah, fizzle because it has yeah, yeah. no targets, but it's been cast into the aether. Yeah. Can you, do you know if you can just like throw spells away? I don't think you can because you have to have a legal target. You have to have a legal target it, right? at the time of casting it. I just thought of that. But yeah, so actually, this is like, really funny. So I ran into Andrew, friend of the podcast. Hey, he's, he's been, been on the stream a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he was talking to me about his liquid metal coating deck that like really oh, silly yeah yeah where if you don't know liquid metal coating basically says you can it's an artifact you can mm-hmm. tap to turn any other permanent uh mm-hmm. into an artifact yep which is cool because then you can blow up all these artifacts with things like ancient grudge uh nature's claim all the very cheap you know spot removal yep. uh shatter and so he did something really silly where he targeted something in order to blow it up with his nature's claim. Okay. But uh, it turned into an artifact, and then he cast his nature's claim, and then in response, the opponent unsummoned the thing. And so it just fizzled, and like he didn't get to gain the life off of it or anything like that. But right. it's interesting because it just kind of happened to display the fact that you can fizzle spells off the stack really easily, actually. Um, yeah. And that's why you see in like modern Delver, sometimes you'll see like uh, Vapor Snag is run occasionally. And you don't necessarily use it that way, but it can come up. Mm. Uh, if they try and kill a card, you can just vapor snag it back to yourself, and then yep. that fizzles. So it's interesting how you can manipulate the stack, I guess, is the best. Uh... Yeah. That's what I got. That's it. I'm yeah. done. I like it. <laughs> no, but that's true. No, um, but it's interesting. Protect stuff that way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that's that was a great uh, a good example of how target things on the stack. Um, so the question comes up, though, I'm sure, of what uses the stack and what doesn't. And that ties back with priority, and we'll touch on that again in a second. Um, so the actions that go on the stack, there are really only two like branches of act- actions mm-hmm. that go on the stack. Casting spells, which of course is huge, and it covers every single spell. Um, and activating non-mana abilities. Yeah. So a mana ability is a mana that produces, or an ability that produces mana, does not target... And there's one other like characteristic that I don't remember. Basically, if you think about it like uh, Elvish Mystic or Lanoir Elves, yeah. you tap that to add a green to your mana pool. Right. That does not go on the stack. Right. But if you're activating, uh, what's a good? Um, uh, one of the Guild Mages. One of the Guild Mages, perfect. If you activate one of their abilities, that does go on the stack mm-hmm. because it is not a mana ability. So you can yeah. respond to that. And that's where we find cards like misdirection and stifle and weird stuff like that yeah <laughs> yeah um disallow for you standard players so stuff like that um things that don't use the stack at all and this is actually a longer list than one might think um mana abilities we just said playing a land doesn't go on the stack that's kind of obvious yeah um unmorphing creatures doesn't go on the stack that's an active ability okay is how it's Coined. Now you you do only you are only able to use active abilities when you have priority. Mm-hmm. Even so, you don't have to touch the stack to use them. It's just a thing that happens. Um, you can do it at any time you have priority. Okay, but you cool. have to have it. So yeah, yeah. So that's relevant for things like split second, for yeah. instance. A split second basically ends the stack. Um, you're unable to cast any more spells for that phase, mm. really. But if I have something morphed, I can unmorph it. Yeah, that's all that means. Um, phasing in and out, <laughs> <doesn't>, phasing <laughs> right, <laughs> blast from oh, the past man. doesn't go on the stack. Um, again, untap step, draw step doesn't go on the stack. Declaring attackers doesn't go on the stack. Discarding the hand, no. Exiling with suspend does not go on the stack. Yeah, um, suspending a card really. That's why you can't counter mm-hmm. when somebody suspends the card. It you can mm-hmm. counter when it comes off of suspend right. and it actually gets cast. Mm-hmm. That's how that goes. Right, because suspending isn't casting. Yeah, it's kind of just like investing a little bit investing yeah, it's itself. long-term investment um if there's a spell that targets things in exile i guess you can but i, I can't think yeah, of any spell yeah. that does that there might be there might not be i'm not sure um and then when until end of turn effects basically during the cleanup step when those things happen um all of those are game abilities mm-hmm. or checks things that happen 
and none of them go on the stack. Um, I think that's it. Okay, cool. Um, I really wanted to just touch on one more time split second. You mentioned mm. it already. Yep. Um, split second is what I think is a really cool ability because it was wizards playing with the stack a little bit more. Um, obviously counter magic and all that stuff is mm -hmm. there and that plays with the stack sort of, but it's not messing with the stack intentionally. It's more just like, I just don't want you to have this thing. Split second actually stops the stack entirely. And that's right. where people, I think it's really important when you hold priority, because if you're worried about somebody having like a crozen grip to blow up an artifact or something like that, you may want to do something before they cast that crozen grip. And so you have the opportunity to do that when you hold that priority. And so if sure. you have a second, you know, card you want to play or something like that, you can do it. So sure. interesting stuff. I like that there's a mechanic that messes with the stack, mm -hmm. though, a little bit. I just think that's fun. <laughs> While I was writing stuff down for this episode and looking stuff up, I came across a question oh. that I'll pose to you and the rest of the world. Okay. So <laughs> The rest of the world. So um, during a match in FNM recently, <laughs> uh, my opponent played a creature that had Hexproof. Okay. Could not be countered. It was the Sphinx. Okay. Why? The, whatever. I forget the name. Sure. The fancy blue Sphinx that's really scary. Um, and I had commit to memory. Okay. Mm. So before it resolved, when I had priority, I used commit on the Sphinx. Which? While it's on the stack. While it's on the stack. Right. Yeah. So now here's the thing. The Sphinx has hexproof. Yeah. But does it have hexproof on the stack is my question. Because the reason I ask that is the stack is like section 405 in the rule book. <laughs> section 405.4 has a line that's just one sentence kind of smushed in there that reads, every card on the stack has all characteristics associated with that card. Oh. Now, hexproof is an ability. It is. But is an ability a characteristic? I don't know. I don't know how that would work. I don't know either. I think I played it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I have always believed that <coughs> they don't have their abilities until they resolve. Right. That was always my take. Because you can counter a spell on the stack that, that has, has hexproof. hexproof. You right. can do that. That's my, and that's why the Sphinx has the line, can't be countered. Right. That's exactly is my that's thought. There. But then the line says... Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Because I looked up... Is an ability a characteristic MTG? Yeah. Yes, they are, but cards like the Sphinx say those things specifically, which make me think that technically no. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll post that to you guys, because honestly, I am not sure. Hey, judge. <laughs> judge. Yeah, it's it was a... Uh, Milo walks in. <laughs> it was confusing. So, really to say that all spells have the characteristics associated with that spell, all that means, I believe... <laughs> from gleaning my information is that like it's a red spell it has a cmc sure it is a creature spell or etc something the like that the fundamental side of things right. not the like the, anatomy of the, the keywords not that right that's what i think it means but i don't know where the line stops that sounds correct to me but again i'm not a judge so i don't know so many questions yeah if any of you are judges out of the 15 of you that normally watch i'll just know yeah, there's like 18 <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay fair well okay minus us yeah <laughs> i watch it 17 times so there's one of you out there <laughs> no that's me oh <laughs> um geez um so yeah that's yeah, my yeah. that's my curious tidbit for the day that's a good one i don't know so yeah um, you could win a dollar i don't know we're not um, giving you a dollar we're not giving um, you a dollar. <laughs> hopefully that covered the stack priority a little yeah, bit yeah. uh kev do you have any questions burning in your um, brain you know, I was trying to think of instances where, like, similar to what you just posed, where there would mm -hmm. be sort of a difficult question, but that kind of is the difficult question that I would think of, or okay. that I could have imagined. So It's tough. It is a little bit know. tricky. Um, what I find is really interesting is people who play MTGO in particular, um, the stack and priority is passed sort of automatically. Like, you have prompts for every single thing that you do mm -hmm. and what i've found uh for people who play kind of casually is that when you go to paper magic from mtgo you kind of miss a lot of those because you're expecting that the game itself is going to take care of that and so i've found at least that people like say oh oh i should have i should have done this then and it's like you know so my advice of the day i guess i would say is when you're going through a paper game of magic make mm -hmm. sure in your mind you're thinking about okay 
He's playing a spell. He has priority. Mm-hmm. Or she. We're not discriminatory. Um, <laughs> no, I don't know why you said it like that. We're not. I don't know either. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> um, the opponent uh, plays a spell. They have priority. If they pass it to you immediately, that's your chance to respond. You don't. Mm-hmm. That is the only chance to respond to that particular mm-hmm. spell. So just make sure that you're, you know, keeping up with that. I yeah. would say. Also, um, keep your opponents honest. Yes. Because new players might just like try to move on. Yeah. And if you want to do something, like stop. Go them. for it. Yeah. I mean, in between phases, you, you have the opportunity, and that's why when you phases in particular. But that's why if you go to, and I know we try to do this when we play games, Mm -hmm. Um, like if we're going to combat, we've had our first main phase, we didn't do anything, say, Mm -hmm. and instead of just saying, okay, I'm going to swing with these guys, we'll say, move to attacks. Because that gives you the opportunity to say, Mm -hmm. okay, well, in response to changing phases, let me do this. Yeah. Um, And nine times out of ten, nothing happens. But it's the importance of knowing how that works to Mm -hmm. make sure that you're consistent, and if you do decide to go play on a competitive GP or something like that, you know what you're doing, yep. and you're not going to get caught out, you know, doing something kind of silly. Because yeah. I will promise you, at a tournament, nobody's going to be like, "Well, it's okay." No, yeah, you no, messed up. Not. Like you're yeah. done. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now, something again to remember in that same vein is if someone sits down to play, you're playing games, um, and you know it's their main phase, but they just go right into combat. You technically have two phases to do things. Yeah. Because no one can just skip a phase and not no, give you no. the opportunity to do anything. To move on to the next phase, priority has to go from player one to player two, mm-hmm. back to player one. So you have the opportunity to do something on their main phase if you want, even if they don't want to. Yeah, exactly. Suck it up, other player. Deal with it. Um, <laughs> but what often happens is someone like you said will yeah. say move to attacks which means i'm going to give you all my priority that's the prompt to say okay let me do something in response right. yeah. and now it is on your like your plate to if you wanted to do something on the main phase versus before attacks yeah. it's your it's your uh responsibility to signify that to say yep. this is when i'm doing this thing. yes 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 right so magic gives you kind of the option <clears throat> to get a little messy with the rules yeah, in that respect, bit. get a little freeform. Um, um, but they're still there, they're strict. Um, and it's and it know. may sound a little bit pedantic to do all this, but like I promise it's important. No, it is very it's important. It's very important. You, the ability to play things when you want to play things, mm-hmm. to maximize their, their uh, timeliness, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, that's huge. It is, um, it's massive. Yeah. So Definitely. All right, I'm good with that. Cool. Do you have anything else you want to add? Um, well mm-hmm. done, by the way. Thanks. Yeah, I'm good. I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm I think I am too. I think that was great. If you guys do have any questions, of course, about the stack, please let us know in the comment mm-hmm. section below. We will do our best to answer them. We are not judges, so keep that in mind. But we will no. do our very best to make sure that we get you what we believe is the correct answer. Um, so, yeah. Moving on. Yeah. Uh, to our question of the week. So, last week, um, obviously, there have been a lot of changes going on. You saw in our last week's podcast episode or listened to. Um, we talked about we've got content ideas planned. We obviously have our new partnership with Burst of Knowledge and Tyler. Um, and so we've got a lot of things going on, basically. Mm-hmm. And so we asked for your content ideas. What kinds of things do you want to see? That way we can prioritize those over the next few weeks and hopefully generate some extra content for you guys. Deck tech seemed to be the prevailing thing that people wanted. Um, specifically, yeah. casual EDH deck techs, which I think is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, EDH decks are notoriously a little bit longer to make a deck tech for sure. because there's a lot more cards. It's also a lot more flexible in terms of you have such a wide range of cards that are okay to play in Commander. Yeah. Like, if you're focusing on Modern, it's like, okay, I need a cantrip. Well, you got Opt, and you got Serum Visions, and Sleight of Hand. But, like... <laughs> You know, like, those are the options, whereas right. in EDH, there's a whole mess of options out there that you can go through. Yeah. So they're a little bit more loose, which we do plan to give a shot, and we'll see if we can get those going. Definitely. Yesterday, you saw that we had our first actual deck tech go up on the channel, our standalone deck tech, I should say, mm-hmm. of a very silly modern deck, uh, but it's ah. budget-friendly, so... Very budget-friendly. It's like 30 bucks, so... Maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um... So, uh, I highly recommend going uh, to check that out. If you have any suggestions, anything like that, if you have a deck list that you want us to go over, post it in the comments. We mm-hmm. will check those out, and we will make videos on those if we feel like 
uh, yep. other people would enjoy that because yep. I think that's the key. Now they they aren't going to be podcast episodes like they used to be. Yeah. Um, they will go to our YouTube channel. Yes. Uh, much, the primarily. plan for the deck text is we'll have one a week, probably every Tuesday is the mm-hmm. is the goal there. Um, which it's kind of nice because we don't have to worry about video. Yeah. It's just audio basically, so it's yeah. a little bit easier in mm-hmm. terms of editing. So yep. it shouldn't add too much to our plate. Hopefully you guys enjoy it too. Right. But that means for podcast listeners, if you want them, then. YouTube. Watch the deck tech videos. YouTube. Yeah, go to YouTube. Cool. Um, for this week, our question of the week is uh, dealing with the stack and things like that. It's a little bit more of a complicated subject. There's a lot of other complicated subjects in magic. Mm-hmm. And so we want to know what kinds of things you guys have struggled with with magic. So is it, I mean, has the stack been a problem for you? Just recognizing where priority lands. If there's anything else, let us know. Uh, we can talk about it on the next episode. So right. That's the plan. Um, also, if we got anything wrong, tell us. Oh, yeah, by all means. If we're wrong, fact check us, dude. That's totally cool. Yeah! All right. <laughs> Last segment, guys. We have our crack of packs and, of course, our goal cards. What's yours? Golf or the Primal Hunger, and she's not going to be in here. I just yeah. know it. And mine's Neza Hall, the Primal Tide. <laughs> is it is it Galta? Yes, Are you serious? <laughs> no way. Oh come Read on. Read it and weep, everybody. <laughs> Boom. <Yeah. laughs> Golly. Uh, I forgot what satisfaction felt like. Okay, well I did not get I got Hadana's climb. Oh man, what the crap? Seriously. <laughs> Look at that. What do you win when Sexy we do this? Sexy scared. Um, didn't I get to pie you in the face? Is that what we called it? Maybe. That's fine. We can do that. I don't know. I would probably take the climb just because that's fun. Dude, you should take Galta <sighs> no matter Duh. what. <laughs> There's so many other good cards in here, though. Actually, yeah, you got a good Honestly, pack. like, um, so some of these aren't first pickable. Like, Crashing Tide is good. It's not first pickable, though. No, definitely um, not. Forerunner of the Heralds, again, good. I don't know uh, about first pick. I think it could be first pick. It really depends on the other cards, but sure. I would be comfortable first picking it in some scenarios. Sure. Um, Sadistic Sky Marcher is great. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a scary card. Yeah. Uh, Thrashing Brontodon. It's a three four for three with enchantment. <laughs> enchantment and artifact removal. And enchantments are really prominent in this set um, too. So. That's, that's an awesome freaking card, but it's got to be Galta, dude. Oh yeah, of course, it's got to be. Ah, uh, God, Galta. <sighs> Good thing I own these cards. <laughs> this is your pack. Uh, yeah, you so you get to pie me in the face. Oh, that's going to feel so good. We need to go get uh, like tin pan and some whipped cream and just let yeah, that happen. Yeah, that's it, man. Is that all that is? That's all they I are, think so. as always, is whipped cream. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's just so. a whipped cream pie. Um, where are we going to do that, though? On the podcast? At the end of the next podcast episode? <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. I'm fine with that. Tyler might be here. Hey. Our, pa- our plan, by the way, is to have Tyler on for the next episode. So if you guys are excited about the partnership or anything like that, um, the plan is to have him on and sort of just do a casual like interview kind of style thing. Yeah. And that way we get to know a little bit more about him. And he-, he has a chance to ask us questions and stuff like that. So Yeah, yeah. The Earth you have walks. to pick a new goal card for like two weeks. <laughs> if you get it, I would kill you. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> Let me pick a comment. <laughs> yeah, a comment. Um, we okay. technically never set rules on what you can pick. That's true. We just wanted to pick the fun stuff. Yeah. Um, I am beside myself. I saw a little hint of green. Yeah, yeah. I was like, ah, there's no way. That's something dumb. God, I really wish I had gotten mine. Man, we have, you have, we still have a week. Yeah, yeah. One week? One or two. I don't know. I'm not gonna get it. That's okay. Oh, that's defeatist. A little bit. Perk it up there, bud. There you go. I'm not going to get it. Ah. <laughs> anyway, guys. Guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, hopefully it was actually a little bit more of a useful episode than our past episode. Um, or 20. I was gonna say, or two or three? Yeah, there was a couple in two? there where we kind of rambled. Guys, we've been short on time. I'm not making excuses, but we were short on time. Um, He's making excuses. I'm making excuses. No, but hopefully this honestly was a useful episode for you guys. Hopefully you can understand the stack a little bit better. Um, And hopefully you're excited about all these new changges, because there's a lot of new stuff coming um, that we're excited about. So hopefully you guys are make more fresh fresh content. That fresh content. I I sent, I confused 
Tyler and Kev with a meme about fresh content. You did, because it looked like you were just, like, not wanting to hear the idea. No, he's, like, holding his face and going... Like he's no, excited. I know. I saw after the fact. But, like, it... At first glance, it kind of looked a little... Just a little... A little nah, bougie. Not at all. It's... It was, um... What was his name? It was Stefan from... From oh, SNL. I know. And I love Stefan. And he's holding his face going... <laughs> you know, like he gets excited. Like he's uh, salivating at the chance. Salivating at the chance. For new content. That's not a weird phrase. Salivating? At the chance for new content. That phrase seems very odd for some reason. Well, that's why I used it. That's oh, why. That makes so much more sense. That was the example. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hence the meme. That's a great, like, 21st century band name. Like, <laughs> millennials band name. Hence the meme? Yeah. Hence the meme. My case of the day, but well, so lamer. guys, again, talk so much yourselves. Um, <laughs> we do this at the end of every episode. This really needs to become a normal part of the episode where we the, just yeah. ramble. It's the it's the uh, um, roll the credits. Command Zone does that. They just talk about something non magic related. Oh, do they really? Funny. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen their entire Command Zone. Have you not, dude? They're really good. <laughs> they are, but they're like an hour. They're really plus. Long. They're really long. Um, crap, what was I gonna say? I don't know. What were we talking about? Hence the meme. Oh, no. We were talking about uh, earlier today. We were talking about making a music podcast. Yeah. Um, We can call it Hence the Meme. (laughs) Which has absolutely nothing to do. That's the thing. I like that you put in Haste the Day, by the way. That was smooth. It was boop, boop, boop. boop. If he's watching, he knows what we're doing. (laughs) Him. Who? What? You'll know. Okay. We'll we'll not talk about that. (laughs) Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Fairly fun episode and hopefully productive episode of It Resolves. If you did, make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and turn that little bell icon on so you get notified about all of our content. Good or bad. Yeah, there's a lot of new stuff coming, so hopefully you guys will enjoy it. But with that, we're going to get out of here. My name's Kevin. My name's Will. And this has been It Resolves.